Our joined by Zainab Ibrahim Kuchi, who is the Minister of State for Niger Delta. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. Well, uh, interesting development in this uh, about the fuel subsidy matter. But again, yes, you do support it. But in terms of the structure, the way that they're going about it, a lot of Nigerians disagree with it. You think government shouldn't should change their approach? Well. Let me start by saying now we talk from the premise of a woman, a mother, a professional who sits in the council of the federal government. And I also talk on the premise of the president's commitment to the programs that it intends. While feeling the pain for Nigerians, definitely Mr. President feels the pain for Nigerians, but he's absolutely committed to this issue of subsidy removal. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, this was not something he woke up 31st of December to announce on the 1st of January. It was well planned. It was well, the impact analysis was well made. There was a committee that was set up since September. And this committee was chaired by the vice president of this great nation with a lot of ministers in cabinet in relevant, uh, relevant ministries and MDAs as members. It was well planned, well orchestrated, and a lot of programs were churned out because they weighed the pros and cons. The impact analysis was actually done. We envisage all this. In fact, Mr. President always say that, I know for the next one year I may be called all sorts of names, but I would rather take a decision that helps the generality of Nigerians than to just continue with this charade of fuel subsidy that is only enhancing the pockets of a few. It's really surprising uh, to hear that uh, there were wide consultations because what we're mm -hmm. getting from Labour, specifically the president of the Trade Union Congress, uh, Peter Isela, he was uh, right here in our studios and he did say, well, it was a one-off meeting and even uh, uh, Mr. Lisa Bakuba did also say when, when they had the NPAN town hall meeting, he thought there were going to be a series of other meetings, but lo and behold, it was just one-off again. So. The committee that has been meeting since, since September, who have they been meeting and what were the recommendations or where are the findings it, of it that? It was not an issue for a referendum. So the labor, the NGOs, the civil society was not the key to this project. It was a decision by the federal government of what is good for Nigerians, what is best for the polity. After impact analysis of reports from the NNPC, the NNPC do give reports contrary to what people believe. The economic team do work contrary to the belief of the polity. And when you have a pain, a problem that is actually serious, you address it. So based on the reports on the pres Mr. President's table, and I believe that eventually Nigerians will see the political will with which he addressed this issue. Decisions we are taking to set up a committee, chaired by the Vice President, as I've just said. The Vice President held several meetings with the mem some members of the Federal Executive Council, National Planning, the Economic um, Advisors, and came out with programs and ways and means that will mitigate the charade of, if I call it a charade of uh, subsidy. The sub for a subsidy regime was something that if the Nigerians were to really get the actual picture of what happens under subsidy, they would definitely applaud Mr. President for the courage and the political will. I, I believe that a host of Nigerians, <coughs> at least from the one meeting that, you know, from the debates that was done, from the one debate that was done, a host of Nigerians got at least a picture of what exactly the federal government was going through. And maybe in many ways they agreed with the federal government that ultimately this will have to go but this will be when exactly you have done a host of things you said that the vice, the vice president headed a committee that had been meeting you know since september and you said the host of things were planned to you know soften to soften the the removal of fuel subsidy on people because impact assessment was done 
it seems that so far so good nobody has seen anything even the buses which were even supposed to be on the way became a subject of controversy will you know that uh, we start that by the mass transit issue you raised will you know that since 2010 the government keyed into a scheme called the mass public mass transit um, scheme transportation scheme since 2010 since 2010 this was well advertised with urban development bank as fund managers approved in council 10 billion naira for this fund it was a novel issue and about 1630 something buses were bought and this same label took a share a whole chunk of 450 the buses from urban development bank and Urban Development Bank has confirmed to council that about 75% success story can be acclaimed from this uh, subsidy scheme, sorry, this, uh, this uh, uh, public mass transit fund uh, approval that the government gave. We got a report in council and we equally got assurance and they are now orchestrating that this can be risen to maybe 10,000 buses. Labor alone some state governments, some NGOs, and some private sector people. It was not driven by government. It was highly subsidized by, uh, by government, 5% interest, and a five years repayment period. And this has been taken up, up to 75%. Sorry, madam. Are we, in are we cities? Are, where are we cities? They are supposed to be all over. But in the cities, them. Nobody, that is what we should ask Labour. The 450 them. buses that they bought under the scheme that the federal government highly subsidized and supported where are the buses they say their own buses are coming but what about the one buses this no, no, no. what about the 1006 because if i can get your explanation right it seems the federal government had one and labor had another no let me correct you i said in 2010 the federal government in the federal executive council approved 10 billion that is federal government approving and federal ministry of finance disbursing to urban development bank maybe you invite over development bank to come and speak on this but definitely they have now reported 75 percent success story on the accretion of this revolving fund is a revolving fund that the federal government guarantee and labor benefited by assessing this fund buying 450 buses where are they? Well, I can okay. tell you. They are supposed to ply the urban and rural areas. Do you see anything is a subsidiary of labor? So maybe labor should come tell the nation. I can tell you that uh, the TUC are. president, Peter Estelle, was on the news at 10, and he did say that they are bringing in some buses which are supposed to come. I think the first thing first would have been, if the federal government is not seeing those buses that they have already subsidized for on the road, they would at least ask or wait for the buses to come before removing subsidies. I am saying this is from 2010. We have a whole list of companies that have bought these buses. These buses are on the roads. And these are buses that use all sorts of uh, um, foil, they use diesel. So why don't we have them on the road? It's not as though government woke up one day and say, okay, we are removing subsidy. And that government has not actually cushioned anything. From 2010, 6,000, about 1,600 and something are already on the ground. These additional ones are what is being done now under the palliative measures so that we have that. And even that is already on the country. They are not yet on the road. But what we have on the ground is supposed to be servicing the policy. All right, but when labor comes in and talk the way they talk, I wonder, because the facts are there. Since you say the, this uh, policy was well thought out, lots of meetings were held, tell us about the part, uh, what percentage of, their sal of government salaries, of government public officials has been cut? The issue of um, recurrent is not before us on that subsidy. These are issues that are approved at uh, the system. What we have here is issues of subsidy. Yeah, but I and thought we're all supposed to It is not connected. Adjust it is not connected. Because what the subsidy removal is supposed to cushion is the aspects of wastages that we have. So there are and, no wastages um, in government expenditure, even with recurrent expenditure? The wastages in government expenditures are something that you know goes through appropriation and are approved and are budgeted for. If you classify them as wastages, these are issues no, that should be identified. I'm not wholly classifying the ones that have been approved as wastages. I mean, Mr. Peter Sire did say, he's a member of the economic management team. Yes. He says, yes, they may have been appropriated, but there are wastages in government. Well, I have not 
identify the wastages and may not be in a good position to talk about the wastages, but I can talk about the subsidy removal and what the, the wastages in the subsidy removal issues because I was a part of I was I was very comfortable with the program or the sure program that came out of the um, uh, the, the subsidy impact analysis. Okay, and I you, can you, talk. You are, you are a part of this. We are a part of it so because we are one of the MDAs that we do some oh, aspects of oh, it. Good. So all the MDAs that we key into the 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 actual program, we are part of the 